Who has seen Inside Out 2 at the cinema? Let's have a show of hands. Oh, we've got a few, not many. It's a really, really great film. And for those who don't know, Inside Out is about a young girl called Riley. <coughs> and we follow the adventures of her five core emotions in her head. And each of the emotions is given their own individual character. So we have joy, we have sadness, we have disgust, fear, and we have anger. And in the sequel that just came out this summer, Riley's entering her teenage years, and so we have new emotions being introduced. This time, we have the addition of embarrassment, envy, ennui, which is a rather fancy word for boredom, very important when you're a teenager, and anxiety. And without giving away any spoilers, because it's very clear a lot of you have yet to see the sequel, <laughs> anxiety tries to suppress all the other emotions and effectively try and take control. Now, our first reading today was from Psalm 23, which is an ancient Hebrew poem. And it's probably one of the most famous things in the Bible. It's often read at funerals, but we encounter it a lot, actually, in popular culture. You hear it in James Cameron's Titanic film. It's in Steven Spielberg's Saving Private Ryan. You hear it in rap music. Coolio and Kanye West have echoed Psalm 23. It's clearly a psalm that means a lot to many different people. But what links a film like Inside Out with Psalm 23? I think, like Riley, the person praying Psalm 23 is feeling anxious. They say they're walking through the darkest valley. They say they're surrounded by enemies. And I don't think this is necessarily enemies in the sense of like military foes. I think it just means those things that challenge us, those things that might cause us to fail, those things that makes us anxious. I wonder what makes you anxious. Let's spend a minute or two maybe talking to the person sat next to you, thinking about and talking about what makes you anxious or nervous. Let's just do that for a second. Okay, okay. Is anyone, anything that, has anyone got anything they'd like to share about what makes them anxious or nervous? Has anyone got anything they'd like to share about what makes them anxious or nervous? Go on. I get anxious about my mother getting anxious about me. Yeah, anxious spreads, yeah. That's a good one. Um, I get anxious before I do a dance competition. Oh yeah, dancing competitions. Oh. To be fair, I said um, it's more the question for me is what I don't get anxious about. <laughs> okay. I mean, talking ang about anxiety, it's interesting. Oh, hang on, sorry. We're, we're going to talk a little bit more about anxiety. I think one of the things that I'm anxious about now I'm getting older is, uh, you know, what's happening throughout the world. You know, we seem to be quite singular and very lucky where we are in a democratic country, but you look a little bit further out there and you realise how lucky we are in this country. Absolutely. Anything else? Just talking about anxiety, it's interesting to recognise how much science there is behind a film like Inside Out. Because the filmmakers actually spent a lot of time talking to scientists about emotions. They consulted with a professor of psychology from Berkeley University in California, Dacher Keltner. This is him. 
And he spent a lot of time studying different emotions, writing about them. But the one that he's spent probably the most time studying doesn't actually make it in to the Inside Out films. The emotion he's kind of investigated the most is actually awe. He's written an entire book about awe. It's a really, really good book. It's called Awe, the Transformative Power of Everyday Wonder. And at one point in the book, he does actually wonder whether in a future Inside Out film, we might encounter awe. Maybe when Riley is a little older, maybe her, during her college years, when she might be moved by awe. So what is awe? Dacher Keltner defines it like this. Awe is the emotion we experience when we encounter vast mysteries we don't understand. Awe is the emotion we experience when we encounter vast mysteries we don't understand. To me, that sounds a lot like the journey of faith, the one Jemima's on now. Awe is a gift from God that opens us to the world. The Holy Spirit moves us when we experience awe, gives us an inkling about the wonders of being alive, puts our existence into perspective, draws us to our neighbor. We experience awe when we see acts of kindness and bravery in nature. And we encounter awe when we listen to great music. We experience awe when we watch sports. when we consider matters of life and death. So having talked about anxiety, I wonder what makes you feel awe. Maybe we'll spend a few minutes talking about what makes you feel awe. Go on, let's do it. Okay. Does anyone want to share what gives them sense of awe? Yeah. I feel awe about the future. Oh, there we go. That's positive. Victoria? Um, being in love. Being in love. Um, watching children grow. Yeah. I certainly felt awe when I saw my kids been born. I found awe when the, the, uh, my grandchildren were born. Yeah. Okay. So why all... Oh, hang on. David at it? Okay. Oh. Uh, when you're in a place where there's no light pollution and you just look up at the sky and you see, at night and you just see all those stars, you just think, wow, that is amazing. Yeah. Nature. Okay. So what's all this talk about all? I'm going to make a bold claim. Nurturing awe in your life is a crucial part of your spiritual growth. I think it's a great counterweight to those feelings of anxiety and nervousness that we talked about. Professor Dacker says, awe quietens the nagging, self-critical, overbearing, status-conscious voice of ourself. Awe empowers us to collaborate Awe opens our mind to wonder and to see the deep patterns of life. You know, it's this tension between anxiety and awe that drives Psalm 23. It's in a lot of the Psalms. The person offering the prayers might be walking through the darkest valley. They might be in the presence of their enemies but they know God is near to them. And they know that through the everyday awe they experience. Dacher Keltner talks about something called wild awe when people encounter nature. And that's something we see in the psalm. This character is lying down next to green pastures, being led by still waters. 
I think one of the things that strikes me about the character at the center of Psalm 23 is just how still they are. Rather than allowing anxiety to take hold and become fixated on the bad things that might happen in the future, which is something we see in Inside Out too, the character in Psalm 23 is calm, centered. They're present in the moment. Despite the chaos that surrounds them in their lives, they find comfort <coughs> and affirmation in an awesome God. They say, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. All comes about when we encounter vast mysteries we don't understand. All helps us put things in perspective, and it helps us recognize that we're part of something bigger. Dacher Keltner talks about seeking out everyday awe. We might see it when we see a friend's generosity towards a homeless person, when we smell freshly cut flowers, when we see a beautiful sunrise. Awe can be the engine room of our faith. So with that in mind, I would like to finish with a simple science experiment. Chaos is an important part of awe. And there's nothing quite like encountering awe through the eyes of children. So if, if there's any young people and an adult want to go over to the science supplies over there, we're going to give this a go and we're going to see how this is going to work. Do you want to give it a go? Yeah? Do you want to go over? You hold that. You come with me, okay? Hello. Hello. You be calm, okay? You hold that, okay? Evie, hold that. You hold that. Hold it, bro. Can I pull it? Yeah. Hey, Has everyone got a bottle of oil? Now, the, in the psalm, they talk about being anointed with oil. I don't think they were talking about vegetable oil, but still, you know, <laughs> all can do interesting things to the mind. Evie, just leave that. Okay. You guys can catch up. Take the beaker of colored liquid. No, 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 you hold that. We're going to pour that in. There we go. Yeah, Evie's got them. Evie's got them. Yeah, there we go. Can I put your puppets in? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Just a second, just a second. And then put this. What? Yeah, just a second. <laughs> just a second. Now, there should be a paper cup with an Alka-Seltzer tablet in it. Now, children, do not take those. They're not for the kids. They're for grown-ups who've had a heavy night out. <clears throat> now, we take one of these and we drop it in, okay? Yeah, hold on. You can see it. You can see it, and it becomes like a lava lamp. There we go. Yeah, maybe we should put the lid back on. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Very literally, we have a cup that, in the word of the Psalms, overflows. Well, certainly if you shake it anyway. Can I shake it? Can I shake it? Don't shake it, no. Um, <clears throat> so there we go. Allow awe to play its part in your faith journey. Let awe act like that Alka-Seltzer tablet. Disrupting things, bringing your senses to life, and opening you to awe. Let us pray.
Creator God, we stand in awe of all that you have made. Fill our hearts with gratitude for every good gift, great and small, that feeds and informs us, inviting us and enabling us to become people who are fully alive in your amazing grace. Amen.